everyone and welcome back to episode two of Fun and Games. Now today I want to talk to you about a game called Devotion. And if you haven't heard of Devotion, which I suspect you probably have, you have probably heard of the company that produced it. Now the company itself is called Red Candle Games and they are a very popular, as of now, a very popular Taiwanese game developer. Detention is also a very popular game released in 2017, a 2D scroller mode game set in the era of the White Terror in Taiwan. Also a big recommendation. There is also a film which came out last year of Detention. So if you are in Taiwan, you have probably heard or seen something to do with Red Candle games. Now the game I want to talk to you about today is Devotion, also known in Chinese as Huan Yuan, which is quite special in that you can't actually play it anymore. This game was ranked third game of the year by Polygon Media, despite it not being available to play anymore. And this is because in the game there are a few Easter eggs concerning the Chinese president, I would say jokes or maybe insults by some would consider them to be. According to Red Candle Games, these were originally meant as a placeholder. When they were in the developing phase, they placed these jokes or these memes in and apparently forgot to remove them from the final version. Well, we won't know the truth behind that, but the damage was already done. So Chinese distributors withdrew from the project, the creator's Weibo account was suspended, eventually they pulled the game from Steam China. And it didn't end there, eventually they pulled the game from Steam Worldwide, which is why you can't play it anymore, it simply isn't downloadable anymore. So moving away from the controversy, what is the game about? What is Devotion about? Let's get on with it. So Devotion is set in 1980s Taiwan, focusing on a nuclear family, wife, husband, daughter. And the main character, the point of view character, is the father, who is a struggling playwright. His jobs, his work is suffering and he's not making as much money as before. And to make things worse, for, for him at least, is that his wife used to be a very popular singer who gave up her career to be able to support the family. Their daughter also has a talent for singing. She also wants to become a singer. But these things never go smoothly. She's been having panic attacks. She's come, she has a mental illness of some sort. And instead of taking her to get it checked out, the father is in complete denial about what is happening to her, saying things like, oh, you know, there's no way someone in our family could be crazy as unfortunately mental illness was seen during that time. It is during this unstable time, the main character, the father, is approached by someone called Mental Her and offered help, even a cure for his daughter through the worshipping of a deity called Tsugu Guaning. Of course, this is all shady business and we soon discover that he's basically getting sucked into a cult. As you can probably tell by now, Devotion deals with some pretty heavy themes and events. For one, we have gender roles and how these rigid gender roles really impacted family lifestyle. How we see that manifest in the game is in how the mother, the wife, was successful on her own. She had a great career, but, you know, she gave it up in order to be a good traditional mother. And the fact that though the husband's career wasn't going so well, he still felt that he had to be the breadwinner. He had to be the one to make money to support the family. And he specifically restricted his wife from going back into show business. She had to leave the family, leave her husband and daughter behind in order to go back to her career. And because she didn't have the financial means to, she could not take her daughter with her, which would have solved a lot of the other story. But no, she had to go out and restart her career and say, I will come back and get you when I can. And uh, unfortunately that doesn't happen. 
The second theme I would like to mention is the idea of saving face now. I'm sure you're all very familiar with this concept of saving face and how in Taiwan we have this idea of maintaining face or, you know, saving face. Just this kind of idea. And we can see it in the father and how even though he's not doing well financially, he still feels the need to buy these luxurious products in order to show off his wealth, even though that wealth is practically non-existent. Another example can be seen is when the wife's family discouraged her from going back to her mother's place. So there is this intense need to maintain a facade or maintain appearances despite what the reality may actually be. This also links into my third point that I'd like to make about the game in that it portrays performance pressure, especially through the daughter, who is under a lot of pressure as, as a child to perform well, to sing well, to be the best, and all of this pressure is what creates the fourth, the fourth point I'd like to make, mental illness. Now, the way mental illness is shown in devotion is really interesting. And apparently the team did a lot of research to see what the attitude towards mental illness was like in the 80s. And it wasn't great, to be honest. People wouldn't really accept mental illness as an illness or in a way it would just be seen as pure crazy rather than an actual illness that needed to be treated which we can see when the main character the father refuses to take his daughter to be treated and saying it's impossible for a child of mine to be crazy crazy is the word he used which is not true and also that unwillingness to believe or just the general societal unacceptance of mental illness as a problem or a real thing that can happen led him to believe more easily that his daughter wasn't ill, she was possessed, or there was something wrong with her in a supernatural sense. And with the father believing his daughter is possessed, or as he is convinced into believing she is possessed, this leaves room for the cults to come in, which is my fifth point. Even now in Taiwan, there's a lot of discussion about cults or at least questionable religious groups. So they prey on people in moments of distress, of moments of emotional vulnerability. And this, of course, allows them to bring people into the organization. And this is all solely for financial gain. There's no doubt about that in the game, that Halas is only after profit. And however these people end up is completely not of any concern to them. And this, of course, results in the tragedy that is portrayed in Devotion. No spoilers. I didn't spoil it. <laughs> so devotion really gives a view into these brutal and tragic results. It really gives an insight into, you know, how one can be twisted, how emotions can be manipulated, and how tragedy can occur when one is blinded by devotion rather than by love. To quote the creators in Red Candle Games, we saw people strangled by the stress and ideas like as long as you work hard you will succeed and why can't you be as successful as others? They struggled because of these unrealistic expectations from their peers, family and society. As a result, many people decided to seek out supernatural powers for guidance when there were no real solutions to real life problems. Devotion is a title that delves into such emotions and contradictions. That's the story. I hope everyone stays safe and I will see you in the next episode.